Suppose you want to keyframe some rotations in Blender. First around a particular axis, then around a different one, then another, then another, and so on. How do you do that in Blender? Let's get into it. First, let's try something that might seem right at first glance, but won't actually work. Here I've got some objects that I'd like to rotate. What I've done is made this empty the parent of those objects. That empty is tilted, so if I rotate it along its local z-axis, you can see the tilt of it, and you can see the objects follow along with that rotation axis. Incidentally, I've added the ring object here so that you can see that the objects are following that axis of rotation correctly. Then I've got a second empty, which is the parent of that first empty, and it's tilted in a different direction. So I can rotate it along its local z-axis, and you see the objects rotate along with it. Likewise, this third empty here is the parent of the last one, is tilted at a different angle, and rotates in the same way. So one might imagine that I could keyframe the rotations of the first empty, and then the second empty, and then the third empty, and get the desired effect. But, as we'll see in a second, that actually breaks down pretty quickly. Let's have a look by keyframing the rotation of this first empty at frame zero. Then I'll jump to the end of the clip and rotate this empty along its local z-axis by a, a large amount, say 3,000 degrees, and then keyframe that rotation. So, without even bothering to try and do rotations on the second and then the, the third empties here, let's just have a look at what happens. So, despite the fact that the rotation that I did was around the local z-axis of this object, uh, Blender is really just keyframing the final rotation position, which is not local to the object, but rather to the world. And so the rotation that I want is not actually the rotation that I get. So this is not an approach that's going to work. Let's have a look at another approach that will. Here's another bunch of objects that we want to rotate. And they've been parented to a sequence of empties just like before. You can't see the empties at the moment because they are inside the cube. So let's switch to wireframe mode to make them visible. Here is the first empty that is the parent of the objects and the second empty which is the parent of the first and then the third, the fourth, the fifth and the sixth all of them centered here in the same location. If we pull up the transforms here for each of the six empties we can see that each one has uh, different values for the x, y, and z uh, rotations. That means that each of these six is oriented in a different direction. So I've set up six more empties here, just off to the side. And I'm going to use these as control empties that will individually control the rotation around the six axes that the other empties represent. So what we're going to be able to do is select one of the control empties and then rotate it on the z-axis and that rotation is going to be immediately copied over to one of those six axes of rotation from the original empties that we set up. So the way that we can do that is we can select this first rotation empty and then under object constraint properties we can add a copy rotation constraint and we can tell this empty to copy its rotation from the first control empty. Now we can immediately see that the objects have suddenly jumped to an orientation that they didn't have a moment ago. And that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to correct a couple of the settings uh, to make them a little different from the default values that they have here in the copy rotation constraint. First of all, we only want to copy the Z rotation. So we don't want to copy the X, we don't want to copy the Y, we just want the Z. So what it's doing is that it's taking the Z rotation in world space from the control empty and copying that over to the Z rotation of the first axis empty, also in world space. 
And that's not what we want. We want those axis empties to rotate on their local axis. So over here we choose local space. Now you can see that the objects are still not rotated or oriented the way that they were originally before we started adding the constraints, and that's not what we want. So the secret here is to change the mix setting from replace to after original. After original is the sort of application of this copy rotation constraint that's going to make this whole thing work. Now if I choose this empty and rotate it about its z-axis, we can see that the objects are now rotating and they're rotating around the local z-axis of the first axis empty. Now it's just a matter of applying copy rotation constraints to the other empties. We can select the second rotation empty, give it a copy rotation constraint, target it to the second control empty, have it rotate only the z-axis, have it do so from world to local space, and do it with the after original mix strategy. Let's fast forward through doing this for all of the remaining empties. Now we've got a setup that will work in the expected way. As long as we keyframe rotations with the first control empty, and then the second, and then the third, and we do that in order, the objects will rotate around the desired axes. Let's fast forward through adding keyframes to demonstrate this. A key reason why this approach works is that we're keyframing rotations in world space on the control empties, and the copy rotation constraints are translating those into local rotations on the axis empties, which is what we want. I hope you found this useful. Have a good one.